And welcome back to Shovelware Scavengers, uh, where we are looking at what the Shovelware Diggers left behind. Uh, so yeah, we have spent the first half of the stream uh, looking at mostly Windows things and generally finding some pretty good stuff. We've only found one, uh, one uh, application that was just straight up cl uh, classified as junk, so we're doing pretty good. And you know what, like, there's something that uh, that I wanted to say that I forgot to say at the beginning of the stream. This is called the 2000 Hit Shareware Games. Except that that name is a lie. There are not 2000 games. Some of these programs are not games. Some of these programs are not shareware in that some are freeware, some are public domain, quote unquote, and some of them are just straight up wares. Because um, when when they set about filling two CDs full of stuff, they were a bit unscru unscrupulous as to what was going to be on those CDs. And as for Hit, well, the only Hit involved is the one that some of these people have taken to the head in compiling this. I shouldn't be that, that mean. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. Let's get back to the scavenging. We got a DOS game next, do we? Uh, we got Arcade 2. Ground War. I can find it. There it is. Now I'm wondering if this is going to be the same thing as G War 240 which ended up being a failed dig on the original show. Huh, let's go take a look. Arcade 2, ground 4. Path not found. Oh. Three dots. There we go. Let's go take a look at the re at the readme, and it does say ground war. This may or may not work. Who even knows? Uh, there was a there was a uh, G War two forty. Like I said, this is, this seems to be an earlier version of the of that same game. But we'll give it a try. Two player tank game. So it's two players. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to work correctly. But we'll see what happens. One. Oh boy, this is of its time. Yeah, we're we're gonna see we're gonna see a couple of these. I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. This seems to require a modem. That's probably why it was a failed dig. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's get into this here. Ground War. Share our pro a program. If you okay, ten dollars <clears throat> ten dollars is the registration fee. Lots of buttons. Oh my goodness. W A S Z are the controls. C and V to rotate the turret. One is one is fire. What are these controls? Switch to next tank. Refuel from storage. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So this does not require a modem, but also. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's simultaneous two player. Great. Um, I absolutely cannot see the shot that I just made.
it's it's doing a good job at uh, at uh, interpreting multiple key presses at once. What is the range on these? Wow, that is really short range, actually. Um. Okay, I found the the rotational controls. It's apparently what is the fire button? It's five. Yeah, these these shots go nowhere. Okay. Oh man. Um Mutually assured destruction. Go. Yay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typical tank trouble trash. Except that this this game is not what I would classify as trash, considering that yeah, you know, it functions. There is a game here, for better or worse. Let's let's just eliminate everyone's tanks here and then And like, I am impressed at the fact that it is taking input from four keys at a time. I would honestly not expect a game to do that. <laughs> Destroy all of the tanks. No survivors. Apparently this doesn't count as collision. Great. Can I shoot this now? Okay. Oh no! This tank has turned traitor! Whatever shall we do? I have realized the power of Murka, I guess. But in the end, war never changes. There are no true survivors. Oh, caught on the geometry here. Well, I get. I guess there was a, a slight delay, but uh, the the last dude is. Definitely basically dead. Play again? No. <laughs> By absolutely no means shall I ever play this again. Um So how much was this? Ten dollars? Uh-huh. Yeah, watch how fast I'm gonna pay ten dollars for this. Ah, uh, let's see. Thus, arcade two, round war. This is junk. That did not play well at all. Like the the only thing that impresses me about that game is that it was able to take four key inputs at the same time.
aside from that, do not recommend moving on. Uh, let's see, Dalskin's Arcade Cave. Cave. Okay. All right, uh, let's type cave dot doc. Navigate into cave, avoid walls, eat stars for energy. Cave, C, copyright 1992, F22 software. Shareware 30 day tryouts, send $5 to register. Four DOS, send two, Love and T, Jacob, nine, Good Rich Place, Sharon, Ma, 02067. Uh, and this is just a registration form. So it costs five dollars. Oh, it's one of these games. All right. That's pretty well timed for the fact that uh, that I'm playing it on. Uh, effectively a 486. Oh, it has levels too. Look at that. Oh, and if I hit the walls, it just costs energy. It's not an instant death. Yep. And there's not exactly much to this, but what's here is functional. I don't know that I would pay $5 for this without knowing what the value proposition is. Like, why are we registering this game? What do we get for registering? Oh, jeez. Big dip. Does it get faster? It doesn't feel like it's getting faster. Yeah, flickering smiley face, that's for, for darn sure. distraction, but there's really not much to it. Also like touching the touching the blue border doesn't seem to uh, have any effect. Touching the stars doesn't seem to have any effect either. I thought that was what was increasing my energy, but I just seem to be gaining energy from finishing levels. Yeah, and it's not really getting any harder. It's just... This, this is the game, folks. It's because I'm so pro. I must pro. I must pro. Anyway, we get it. But why am I not losing energy? I'm just out here in the world and it doesn't seem like as long as long as I'm not actually moving, it's not checking whether or not I'm in bounds. Anyway, let's just go ahead and drain all our energy. Power overwhelming. Now it's going faster now that I've died. And also it kept it kept counting my score. Like, it kept counting up score to, despite the fact that I was dead.
Anyway, that was cave, I guess. Arcade, cave. I'll call that a curio. Uh, then again, it's it's a little non-functional. I'm gonna call it a trinket. It's okay, but it's like there really isn't much to it. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what that is, and I have absolutely played this game. Wasn't it in arcade? Oh, in trap four. Let me just make sure here, because there's no check that is made automatically. But yeah, I know exactly what this is. Uh, is there a, there's a readme.bat. I guess that's uh yeah, this is more off super and trap. I forget which one this is. I think this is the Load Runner clone. I think this all I think this did show up in um in Shovelware Diggers. I guess they just never ran into the duplicate. Um I forget. I think I do have it uh configured for Zeng. Let me just make sure that that's the case. Main oh, machine is set the CGA. That's incorrect. Well, hopefully this will work, and if it doesn't, then I'll just try it again. There we go. Oh, okay, this is, no, this is not the, um, yeah, th this is not the one that I was thinking of. So reach other end of maze, the numeric keypad or Q, W, E, A, D, Z, X, and C. Press a key to move, hold shift and press a key to make a hole, or hold F before pressing a key to fill a hole. Well, that didn't work out. So this is the part of the movie where Tron had to nav navigate a maze. Instructions, really helpful. So it just kind of threw me into the game the first time, but now I get to actually look at the instructions. Press the left button to jump forward six squares. Huh? Oh, this is mouse, mouse functions. Point to the square under yourself and press the left. Okay, you can jump. You can jump. Hit J to jump forward six spaces. Okay, well, tell me that in the first place. I get it. All right, all right. Let's try this again. Ooh, this is... this is colorful. But yeah, I believe that Morafware was one of the... one of the earliest companies to start making uh, games at this resolution. Now this 1024 by 768 by 256, you really didn't have a whole lot of games that, uh, that went up this high at this point. Can I jump into a wall and perish? Let's find out. Nope, I can jump over a wall though.
I definitely remember playing this at some point, and I feel like I didn't quite understand the controls. Okay, I can move diagonally. I need to remember that as well. Note that some enemies are stupid and completely stop when anything is in their way. Good to know. Okay, I was definitely holding shift there. I think it's a DOS box thing. Or like, if I hold shift and then press something, it doesn't necessarily, well, it won't necessarily actually like do the thing that I was intending it to do. Let's give this one more try. Jump. Okay, it does not let you perform an invalid jump. If you were to land on a wall or into a hole, it just doesn't let you do it. This is a really pretty game though. And I, I can't really say the same for like most of the um most of the video modes. Like th this is like we are specifically on a video card that supports this ridiculous mode. Yeah, it is nice of the game to be polite because some of the Moraf games are not quite so polite. I know that Moraf's world in particular will like seek to actively deride the player at some points. Can't jump to that square. Okay. Uh, am I in a good jumping position? I don't think I am. I need to move back one more space. There we go. You're on level two! Good start. I think I, I have never made it to level 2 in this game. Probably because I didn't understand that I could jump. That kind of makes an enormous difference in how to play the game. Like, there doesn't seem to be a limit as to how many times you can jump. Oops. There we go. That is an impassable wall. S save me. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, there is a map. Oh, not sure what happened there, but okay. Let's take a look at the map real quick and uh... Yep, that's a map. Anyway, um... Please copy this game for all of your friends and acquaintances. This is the beginner version of Morafs and Traptori. The advanced version, please call 1 800 VGA game. Yeah, as, as a kid, I actually had a Zhang CD. I think I had the printer set up. If 
I don't know if that printed. Oh yeah, document.pf. I don't have a PostScript uh, decoder available though. So I'm not going to be able to actually see what that looks like. But it actually did print. And yeah, here's a bunch of other games by Morafware. Let's just take a quick look at what it looks like at a more normal resolution. Yeah, it looks a little chunkier at uh, at this resolution, but it's a uh, definitely still perfectly fine. Now let's let's try it at a mode that um, I have to flip through that every time. Well, let's try it at a 16 color mode. See what that looks like. Whoa, that's uh, it makes an effort, but um, yeah, Escapade was the load runner. It makes an effort, but this don't look great. Anyway, that's more F -send trap. Or more of super and trap, I guess. Let's go ahead and put it on the board. Oh, DOS. Uh, arcade. And trap. More of super and trap. Um. Yeah, graphics aside, like I do appreciate the fact that this has extremely high resolution uh super vga graphics if you have a card that supports it um but just the just the game itself is still perfectly fine like i i enjoyed that yeah, i call it a relic yeah i like that and it's not it's not like Blow, it's not like blow your mind gameplay, but it can be blow your mind graphics if you have the right card. And DOS Games RK3 Shark 100. Check the master list. Shark 100. All right. As a normal dig, let us scavenge this. Shark. Okay. Uh, well. Tile sharks. Based on the TV game. Is this going to be card sharks? Huh? Let's take a look at your tile sharks. And installing operating. Oh, this, um, hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to work. Uh, this looks like it's going to be BBS software. Uh, it looks like I'm going to, it, it would need a demo key to actually run. I mean, let's try it, but, um, invalid collect command line pro, uh, okay. Shark, shark dot CFG. Okay. I think it's locked up. Um,
Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to uh, to play that game. So um, I am going to refund the points, but we're still gonna put it up on the board. Just as a note, um, arcade three shark one hundred tunnel sharks. And that is going to be marked as trash. We weren't able to get it to run. It appears to be BBS software, and uh, we would need to go through a process to even get this to start. Uh, so just so you know, this is the last game in the queue, so you know, feel free to pile on. Where's the cursor? Weird that I'm not getting a cursor, but okay. Posse BBS WSA. Also, I forgot to check the master list. All right, mark that off. Um, this seems to have a map editor. I'm not seeing it. There's ASCII.BBS. Oh, that's uh, that sure is some art we're looking at right now. Hustler, humor, hustler, busted. What kind of game is this? I'm worried. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, this is this is an, uh, an intro. For the Posse BBS. Is that a mod version of Smells Like Teen Spirit? Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, TGH, how you doing? And do exclamation scav table to get the uh, the list of available things. We're mostly looking at the entries in white. Da, da, da. I don't know the lyrics to this song. Anyway, we get it. Yep, that looks like a map editor to me. I don't know what I'm editing, but that's a map editor. This is a game. Ah! But no! I died. <laughs> what just happened? Let's try again. Oh, these controls are awful. How do I diagonals? Okay. But yeah, this is this is using BIOS key entry, and I just I never turned off the shortcut for for sticky keys. So let me do that right now. May as well turn off the other accessibility shortcuts as well. It sounded like Yinglets were playing the song by climbing on the keyboard. 
Um, ah, sneak it up on me. Ow. Hmm. I strongly feel that there are some files missing from this that would make it a little bit more obvious what the hell it is I'm trying to, to do. But without having those files, I'm not really going to be able to continue any further with this. So let's just put it on the board. Uh, so that is DOS. Arcade two infrastructure. We never actually found a name for this. I'm just gonna call this junk. It looks like there's something here, but like there's something missing in order for this to be a coherent experience. I could probably turn down the cycle count. But still, I don't know how to play. Oh, um, uh, we are going back to Windows. Oops, and that is when I'm classified. And oops, there we go. The first unclassified game that we're looking at here. Read me Islands. Uh, so this very originally for DOS, uh, by someone named Aaron Contour. Ensure that the entire window is viewable when executing the draw. Huh? What is this? David Gillespie, what have you done? Oh, this is just in our generation. Okay. Eh, that's neat. Using default value or using current time. I guess let's use the current time and see what happens. Yep, those are islands, all right. You can change the colors if you want to. Uh, let's, I don't know, let's make it super lava lava. Get down there. Um, there we go. Super Lava Lava, the lava level. Uh, that wasn't a particularly good generation. But I think we get the idea. <laughs> Windows, unclassified, island, has islands, and that's a trinket. <laughs> you, you, you are so thoroughly whelmed. And as I push the button to check the queue, it seems like there's no queue, so I guess I'm going to pick something. Oh, or I'm not going to. Okay, red button, also an unclassified. So the thing about unclassified is you have absolutely no clue what you're going to end up with. 
Uh, red button. Red button dot text. Red button. Okay. The get out of Windows quick program. Does what it says on the tin. <laughs> oh, the thing was still up. Well, I'm gonna keep it up anyway, cause that's literally all there is to that. That's a trinket. Um. Well, let's let's. Do it again, I guess. Um, so you, you run the program, and it makes this red button show up on the desktop. You double click the red button, and it quits Windows. That's all it does. Anyway, that was that was not broken. It did it did what it set out to do. So I'm going to take that as completed. Let's see. Then it'll be too fruster. Alright, NW2, Fruster. There's only the program here. Oh, it's this thing. I can make it go fast. Never seen one that had... Uh... Oh, this is a two-player mode. The game has a two-player mode? Okay, well let's hang on, let's turn it to one player. And I'm not really sure what the goal is here. Puzzle is solved when all uh, well all the sides of the cube are blue. And two players person who first gets the same color of all sides gets one point. First player to six wins. The cursor keys are mouse. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I noticed a distinct lack of, of CSP man that I was calling for. Yeah, this sure is a puzzle game, which I imagine would get very frustrating after a while. Please watch out when you're uh, when you're submitting your um, your requests. Also, the, the, the clock sure is doing some things. Hang on, I, I will go ahead and uh, manually copy that into the queue. There we go. So I'm not really sure what the clock is doing, but it's uh, it sure has an abstract concept of time going on.
Anyway, that's lazy mode, I guess. And beginner then has additional colors. I apparently can't move on to red. I have to get rid of the yellow before I can pick up the blue. Medium just has two reds. An expert has three reds and only one empty space. You know what? I think I get it. I think I get it. Uh, so that was new and two. Master. I was hoping that frustration would be like the board game frustration, which is basically like a take on trouble. Ah, uh, I'm gonna call this a curio. I do not particularly enjoy this kind of puzzle, but surely there is someone out there who is who's going to be into this. And they can send 990, I guess. If uh Oh, 990 to register, or 490 for the latest version of the game. And also, Voluteer 3D, an extremely addictive 3D puzzle game. That's also a thing. Anyway, that was frustration. It's... it's okay. And for some reason, I just quit completely out of Windows. That's interesting. And it's locked up. Hmm, that's even more interesting. And the mouse has stopped working. All right, let me reload this entirely. Um. There we go. You know, one thing that makes this a lot more convenient is um, there is actually a driver that DOSBox X provides that basically allows for mouse integration. So while I'm in Windows, um, I can just simply move the cursor in and out of the uh, DOSBox window to interact with Windows 3.1. And uh, that definitely helps because otherwise the cursor gets actually locked into the window and you have to unlock it with Control F10. Okay, we're staying in Windows. Now it's gonna be new and two C, uh, new and one rather. C stone ten. Take it off the board. And ah, scroll scroll bars are really finicky in Windows three point one. You move off it just slightly; it just falls right off. Registration form for a cornerstone. Whatever this is, costs $10. $10 Canadian. Well, that's neat. Come on, the dot dot. Oh, and if you're, if you are of the French language, you can also order in French. Cornerstone is a deceivingly simple puzzle that will leave you well puzzled. In fact, the only complicated thing about it is solving it. Here's how it works. The the board, that's what the board looks like, it is composed of two wheels that overlap each other. Each wheel shares the same three game pieces, which will look like that. Rotating successfully one wheel and then the other, you can quickly end up with a colorful, albeit, although not very orderly, mosaic. Challenge if you feel up to it. 
is to put the things back in the neat clean way the board was in the first place before you started messing it up. Oh jeez. Just blame me for messing everything up. So the left the left button will rotate clockwise, the right button will rotate counterclockwise. And I feel like we have something that we should show to Oscar Van Dagen or something. I win! Okay. Where is the piece that goes here? Or is there a piece that goes there? Hmm. Probably not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because like these scrambling puzzles are not really my jam. But I can see someone getting into this. Yeah, there's only the two pivot points, so, um... Oh, hey, Antigon, how you doing? Hey... I feel like hang on. I feel like um this program does not understand the concepts of clockwise and counterclockwise. <laughs> As I feel like it's going in the opposite direction than I'm asking it to. So what's the registration for like you can register for ten dollars, but like, what do you get for registering? Remember that if I found the solution, you certainly can. So there, ah, so silly. Okay, but like, I. Oh, custom is ten dollars for source code and complete solution. I understand now. François Poulin from Sherbrooke, Quebec, which is, I believe, the same town that How Cow actually lives in. Um, so yeah, it's mostly free, but you can get the source code for $10, and then it'll also tell you how to solve it. Okay. I get it. Also, I keep forgetting the friggin' timer. Um... Uh, no more requests on the, on the queue, by the way, so, um, go ahead and put them on. So that was Newman Seastone 10. This cornerstone. Uh, I'll call it a curio. Definitely something that someone can get into. Oh, hey, how cow? I know that fella. Uh, how do you request something? Well, first. Uh, you can open the table of uh, things available here, and um, so you find one of the squares, preferably that is in white, and then you can redeem something for 400 doodads. If you want to redeem uh, for something that is in gray, it will cost you 4,000, because those showed up previously on uh, Chris Osick's shovelware diggers.
So yeah, that was Cornerstone. It's a bit jank. It rotates in the opposite direction than that I would expect it to, but it's it's a neat puzzle if you're into that sort of thing. And you can also save, which is nice. Okay. We're going back to dots. Uh, let me also... Hmm. Oh, it's probably because... Uh, let me do this first. Yeah, okay, there we go. Let's scroll this down a little bit. Uh, so, uh, what was it? DOS Games Adventure... BNC1. I am not seeing where you requested this. Oh, it's under Arcade. That's why. Is that what you meant? DOS Games Arcade ANC1? Yeah, that, that one is in white, so let's go ahead and take it off the board. And head over to Docs. Alright, um... Well, there's a readme.first. Oh, this is Ancients the Death Watch. Okay. It the what? Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. And that just entirely crashed the system. I'm going to try this one more time, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, is there something else that I'm missing? If I type begin, it just bumps right back out. Okay, um... Well, I guess we don't get to see that, but I assure you we're not missing much. Here's your points back. And let's just real quick put that up on the board. And I don't know if it's an emulation problem or if it's what it was, but um All right, Antigon is coming in with one. And it's gotta be another DOS game. So double check it here, arcade two. I think it's going to be pretty obvious what this is. That is Microsoft Q Space. Um, and I believe, um, Actually, Chris Osick himself pointed out this might be a free game that technically came with either QBasic or QuickBasic, but due to the fact that it's not 
packaged with that software. This is illegally on this compilation, which kind of makes it as wares. But we're gonna give it a try anyway. Uh, it's on here. And, like, the neat thing about it, like, this might not be allowed to be on this disc, but the onus was on Softkey to provide um, software that is legal to put on here. And even if there is wares on this disc, nobody who has a copy of the disc can be like accused of committing piracy because they were told that this was a legitimate compilation of games. As a result, this, this compilation was actually not on the market for very long. It got taken down and replaced with something that had all the wares stripped out pretty damn quick. So anyone who has a copy of this compilation can consider themselves lucky. Anyway. Uh, target type up, down, left, right, fire left, fire right. Okay, so this is a keyboard controlled um, missile command. With immediate missiles. In fact, I would call these more like lasers than missiles. But yeah, it's it's pretty clear that this was made with either Q Basic or Quick Basic. Yeah, we we've got another missile command clone. Oh, that's interesting. The explosions actually do intercept my own lasers. So if I cannot shoot through an active explosion, that does add that does add a bit of a ripple to it actually. Also the fact that I can still move the cursor around while uh the end of level scroll is happening. It's kinda neat. Now, does this have any additional, like, ripples to the game? Is there a reason that I'm playing this specifically rather than just Missing Command? The answer is I'm pretty sure there's not. This is this is something that, like I said, would have been uh, packaged in with either Q Basic or Quick Basic, mostly as a an example of code. So like the, the source code would have been available with it. You can look through it, um, figure out what everything does, make modifications, make your own games uh, based on what you learned from this code. I don't know if there's like any limits to how many shots the uh like each laser has. Bonus star base. And we have four star bases now and it is going faster. Ah No I missed! Oh I missed! This is this is going downhill very fast. Oh no. Everybody duck and cover. Well, that one's dead. I 
at least the missing star base doesn't mean like, hey, now we're going to start hitting the planet. Yeah, there definitely is a, a scaling difficulty here. Also, the, the sound effects are definitely queuing up with each other. This has become very easy, actually. Turns out the fewer star bases you have, the easier the game is. And like, oh, well, while I say that, and then one gets through, your parents will be proud of the fact that the planet has been destroyed. Rank Lieutenant. Would you like to try again? I would not. We get it. Yeah, here it is. The following game characteristics can easily be changed within a quick basic interpreter. To change the values of these characteristics, locate their, con their corresponding const or data statements in the source code and change their values, then restart the program, press shift to 5. So yeah, it's a programming exercise that for some reason was compiled into an executable and included here. Well, let's go ahead and put that on the board. Uh, DOS, Arcade 2, Missile, CMD, Microsoft, QSpace. Uh, I'll call it a curio. It's it's a perfectly valid game, but there's really not much to this. And um it's really more for the programming exercise. It looks very boring. It's it's fine. There is better, but it's fine. Staying in DOS now. Uh, so Arcade Atrobs 10. Oh. Comments.txt. Uh, might need to use that for that, actually. Shifting galore. I'm running stopping and accelerating and turning. What kind of game is this? Okay. Read me it out first. Well, that's probably where we should have started. Included is a file called trobot.gif. There's a picture of the robot design. You can view it with any GIF viewer, probably C show. Uh, let's see if I can get it up here. Uh, Bot.gif. Here it is, guys. This is trobot.gif. To view more, to see a more detailed image, look at trobot2.gif. Oh, the, the thing is still up. Move T robot, put in T robot 2. And uh, there that is. Some thought has definitely been put into this. Uh, da da. Also, the file T Robots Ico for an icon if you're running this on Windows. 
I still have no idea what this is. We definitely have a robot of some sort, but um, Advanced T robots. Oh, geez, this is a whole thing. Need a text editor. Obviously, I have one. AT robots. Boy, oh boy, is this ever too long? Doesn't read. Let's just get into this and not do anything. Configuration file name not specified. Um, Randman. Okay. Sample one. I feel like there's some files missing from this. Uh, yeah, um, I think there are probably some files missing that's going to make it so that we can't play this game. That's unfortunate. It's it looks like there's something to this, but um we're not going to find out. But you get your points back. Uh arcade And that's gotta be listed as trash because we couldn't get it to work. Ah, I know exactly what that is. I am surprised that it didn't show up actually in the shovel bar diggers, but it did not. Right, let's take it off the list. Uh, sir, sure. Uh, let's just jump right into it. I, I know exactly what this is. And this is by Solo Software. And it's a, one of many Pipe Dream clones that, uh, that he came up with. And I spent a whole lot of time on this one. This and also the Windows version of Ant Run. Because this was ported to Windows with the Macromedia Director, I think? Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, Solo decided to uh, close up shop. Like all insects, ants have a hard outer covering called the exoskeleton. Because this covering cannot stretch, ants can grow only by molting the skin several times. And yeah, there's a bunch of instructions, but really it's just a pipe dream clone where you turn the pieces. Hmm, can't do that. When I click on fast, it'll go to the nearest border and stop there. I think this is long enough that uh, we'll be able to get a bonus here. Yeah. Oh, geez. So if you can get this inches bar up to the top, then the next time you hit a border, it's going to reset the board, but it is going to leave a blank. I'm hoping this is enough. Sure is. Yeah, I have had 
a lot of fun with this as a kid. Hmm. I think we're going to end up. Oh, no, 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 no. There you go. I can't do that because it's just gonna force us into a wall. And this should be long enough to reset again. And unfortunately, we are stuck. But we needed 110 points, and we got 525, so we can move on to the next screen. The head of the ant is armed with a pair of large, strong jaws. The jaws are hinged so that they open and shut sideways like a pair of scissors. Yeah, it is unfor- like, that's the most unfortunate thing about about uh, Soul Software closing, is just, it just happened one day. I guess he, he must have figured, like, it wasn't really worth the time or resources to keep it running. Like, people weren't really ordering his old DOS games anymore, so he decided, well, probably no one cares. And that's sad to see that go, because there's a lot of cool stuff there. He's a choreographer? I think I might have read that at some point now that you mention it, but like, I did not remember that at all. Yeah, man of many talents, I guess. Is that gonna be enough? I don't think it is. Well, there's gotta be enough points, though. Dude's a polymath. The abdomen of the ant contains two stomachs. One stomach holds the food for itself, and the second stomach is for food to be shared with other ants. You also get like neat little ant facts. Oh, that's gonna get me stuck. But yes, uh, William Solo made a bunch of these games. Like he was clearly super into Pipe Dream and just made a bunch of clones of it. And uh, unlike the works of Albert Ashton, some of these clones definitely have some value to them. Mm, might be tra trapping myself here. Yeah. Yeah, later levels ha start to have like even more weird gimmicks to them. Like some of them may actually have end grids. And if there is an end grid that shows up, then you better darn well end in that grid. Otherwise, the game is over no matter how many points you have. And I'm running out of maneuvering space here. I think, uh, I think that's gotta be it for this level. Oh, I guess I could have kept going, but uh, yeah, more than enough points. I think the next level is going to be a bonus, if I'm not mistaken. No, I thought there were bonus levels in this. Ants have four distinct growing stages, the egg, larva, pupa, and the adult. This development cycle is called complete metamorphosis. Oh, there are two start, uh, start grids here. 
and the ant will randomly start from one of them, so you better be ready for either one. I forgot about that. Yeah, clicking on fast to uh, to hurry the ant up uh, is worth some bonus points to do, so if you can, then do. I forget how many levels the shareware version of this has, but we're probably getting pretty close to the end here. Speaking of end, there's one there. During the daytime, the worker ants move the eggs and larvae of the colony to the top of the nest, the nest so that they can be warmer. So yes, in order to finish this level, you need to finish specifically in the end grid and with enough points. Oh, I'm boxing myself in really bad ways. I'm just gonna go all in here. And hopefully with the... I think with the bonus points we're just barely going to get enough points. Yeah, we got through. We made it to the ending hole. Oh, there's the bonus round. They have to meet meet the score and then reach the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is a pretty fun game. Ants are tidy insects. Some worker ants are given the job to clean debris from the nest and deposit it outside in its own special garbage dump. So yeah, this one does not have a required score. It's all about trying to get as many of these bonus spaces as possible. Oh. Yeah, William Solo didn't only make, um, oh, that's gonna box me in. They didn't only make this sort of pipe dream clone, they made all sorts of games. And many of them were pretty good. And I really hope that uh, all of them have been preserved somewhere. Also, like, since we've seen both of the companies now, like, I always, like, a as a kid, I always had it in my mind that there was a, um, there was a rivalry between Morafware and Solo Software. I don't know why, and it probably was not the case. But um, that's how my that's how my kid brain worked. Anyway, I think we get the point of this game. Uh, each colony of ants has its own characteristic smell. In this way, intruders can be recognized immediately. Uh, what if we want to upgrade? By the way, here's a secret. I believe it's on this screen. Yeah. You go on the upgrade screen, press dollar sign, you input your name, and your registration code, which I don't have, but that's how you register the game. Unfortunately, if you don't have... Oh, there we go. We got out of it eventually. 
But yeah, that was Ant Run. And let's put it on the board. Uh, there is nothing in the queue, so please feel free to uh, add a couple of more things. We won't be going for much longer, but uh, we, ha we have run out of queue for now. And uh, if we don't get to yours, then uh, I will refund the points for anything that we don't get to. Arcade, Ant Run, Ant Run. And the hell with it. I'm calling this a treasure. Like it, th there was, there is a lot of good value to that game. It goes on for a while and it is sufficiently different from, um, you know, Pipe Dream and that sort of game to really be worth playing. So I'm calling that a treasure. Heck with it. Hydration achieved. Um, staying in the arcade folder. Going to AOTD two four four A says Zinfandel. That's a lot of files, actually. Uh, so we got AOTD.exe. This is going to be our starting point. We got nodes.bbs, which is probably where this comes from. Okay. COM2, COM1, COM3, COM4. Sure. I have no idea what this is. Arm of the Dragon. This is BBS software, isn't it? Hail unregistered sysop. CEO name. Uh, Julio. Group name. Scavengers. Cannot save. Good. The file that already exists now. Anyway, um, what was it even called? Arm of the Dragon. I don't think we're going to get this to work. This possibly requires files that we don't have, or otherwise it's just um, BBS software that we would need to be able to connect to a BBS to actually, um, to actually play. So that was arcade TD 244A. It's called Arm of the Dragon. And that is trash. Um, it might it might rank a little bit higher if uh, we actually got it to work, but we did not get it to work. So here's your points back. Uh, did you redeem this twice by accident? Okay, uh, I've refunded both of them. Okay, staying in DOS, we've got catch 14. Where is it? Oh, that's an arcade too. All right, let's uh refresh that. Uh, I'm also going to uh, reboot the guest system here. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's uh, let's let uh, Antigon get a pick here. Might very well be the last one of uh, of the stream, actually. Yep. Because oh, it's underscore cat fourteen. Uh, so what do we got here? Uh, type file ID that does catch if you can. A simple but action-packed addic uh, addictive game that everyone will enjoy. Support Sound Blaster. Source of ale. Catch if you can. First, it's catch baseballs hit by the batting coach. Start spring training and work your way up to major leagues. Although no one ever, no one has ever gotten this far. Uh, it's shareware. Try before you buy. Blah blah blah. What's how how do how do play? Select your input method. God it requires you to catch all the balls hit. Good. Jumboltron. Catcher number eight. Up, left, right, up, left, up, right, down, left, or down, right. Button A pressed once so with button B. What the? What is this? Also, how much does this cost? Uh, Scarborough, Ontario. And drop me a note and wait patiently for a response, but... Source code costs $20. As far as I can tell, the game itself is free. The appropriate amount. What's the what's the appropriate amount? I know the okay. Registration is seven fifty. There we go. Seven fifty. Okay. Um, select level. Easy. Uh, select sound. Sound blaster. On IQ seven. Play the game. Catch if you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Press button to play. Welcome to training camp. The scouts say you're our most promising prospect, even at your age. Training camp wave one. Oh boy. Dang it. Eh. Yeah, real promising. Oh, Excel is, oh well. Cool sheets, but yes. Uh, these controls ain't great. Oh no, 40%. We've already lost. You gotta get back on that horse, son. Gotta get back in there. You heard it. But yeah, even even if it was up, you probably at least, you know, caught. Now how was I supposed to like reliably catch that? Also, look at them legs. Oh, what? The, the way that this hitbox moves around is very inconsistent. Forty percent again. And 
Still, my score goes up. So the this game's presentation is certainly interesting, but um, gotta say the gameplay ain't great. Uh, see what I mean? You gotta be dead on for it to to catch, and there is no way for me to possibly catch that one. Like, if you want to catch on the side, you have to, like, stop moving and then, like, uh, was there a button to speed up? I don't know. There was something about, like, A and B, but, like, I'm pressing A right now, and it's... Dancing! Look at me! You know what? If I can't be a baseballsman, I'm gonna be a professional dancer. I was also trying space and. Oh, well, I guess I wasn't trying space. Let's try space. Oh, and dive for the ball, which uh, sounds incredibly janky. Yeah. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to catch anything. I mean, yeah, I, I realize that's what they're going for, but like, in order for things to line up correctly for that to happen... Hit the showers. Hit the showers. Cindy Crawford. Penn and Teller. Uma Thurman. Pinhead. We had some Hellraiser out here. I'm better than all of y'all. Up yours. If you can. <laughs> I I very much cannot. Anyway. So what was this? Arcade to underscore catch fourteen. Catch if you can. I'm calling this a curio. It's cute. But um it's really jank to play. Like, you do not understand. If you can. <laughs> Love that Megazooks. Ha ha ha. Ah, what was this? 750? Ah. Uh, I understand why you would charge 750, but I am not interested in paying 750 for this. Da, 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 da. Certainly has personality, I'll give it that. Um I got time for one more. I see. Oh, um didn't accept that. We got win games. New win. Patum 14. I would say probably hold off on any additional redeems because this is probably going to be the last thing they have time for. Uh, so yeah, new win. Patum 14. Patuman version 1.4. A brilliant graphical action game for Windows. You need at uh, an AT286 or better. I think you probably need better than that to run Windows. Well, maybe not. Anyway. 
Uh, display resolution 640 by 480. Hopefully it doesn't freak out if it's bigger than that. Uh, very poor students. We lost a very little savings buying our software development kit, so we made this version of Padman a shareware program. It costs ten dollars cash or forty FIM. Uh don't know what FIM is. Yeah, twenty dollars or more will give you the next version of the game. Well, I'm not going to explain how oh there we go. Like all me. Pac-Man is what this is. Got it. Pressing the control. So we we got a boss key, actually. By pressing control, we immediately minimize the game into an icon. Well, let's see if this does anything that Pac-Man does. Oh, jeez. Press space to play. This certainly has some personality to it. it has a couple of sound effects here and there. <laughs> Looks like Colin. I mean... Ah, no. Ah, I didn't go far enough to actually eat the thing. You're a name, Master Mr. Smart. I like that the default name is Mr. Smart. Let's give this another try. It starts with two ghosts right off the bat, and I don't know that I like that. It's like, that's a real good way to get you cornered, like, immediately. Also, it didn't start with two ghosts? Is it just kind of... Hmm. Yeah. It's not necessarily starting with two ghosts. Is just kind of they're moving around randomly until they just kind of happen to leave the enclosure. Well, we got half of the maze done. Well, we can probably at least finish one maze. Yeah, there we go. Set in. Yeah, I, I can I can see why it would uh, be a little harmful to the eyes. Can I go into the enclosure? No. We finish a second maze. Well, we got two down. Oh, and that's all we get unless we register. Um, it was wrong. Have you registered me? No, I certainly have not. I'm probably not going to do this. How much did this cost? Ten bucks? Hmm. I don't know that I would call that I would pay ten dollars for this. The colon gets burned into your retina. Oh the that that is not how I wanna go. 
Browse new in. Patum 14. Adamant. That's a curio. It's it's functional for what it is, but it really ain't much. Now we got 29 done today. That's, that's a pretty good session, I think. Close up. Um... Oh, I accidentally closed before um, accepting that last one, so I get. I guess you get your points back, Antigon. Oh well. Anyway, yeah, that was uh, that was fun. I think. I hope that you guys had fun out there. Um, so thank you for hanging out. Uh, thank you to uh, Benny Zero Herring. Uh, Grim, J Pop, Jewel, Tyrion, Antigon, Zenfandel, big group today. I really enjoy that uh, everyone was able to uh, participate in this, and I, I'm really happy that I waited an extra week to do this because otherwise I would have been doing it against the uh, the Super Smash TV show, and I didn't really want to do that. Thank you for the bits, TGH. Uh, the next scheduled stream is going to be on uh, Sunday at 8 p.m. or later Atlantic Daylight Time. It is the Sunday Super Shuffle. We're going to do some more Archipelago shenanigans. Um, and I'm probably still going to be using the uh, new game YAML, which is going to be either a short hike or Yoshi's Island, and I think it is biased toward Yoshi's Island, so we're probably playing that. And that takes us around the week, around the wheel, to our next Tuesday stream which is going to be the Megazooks Shuffletron. A long time ago, I made the Shuffletron to allow me to randomly select games from a list. Then I never used it, so I'm going to be using it next week, and we're going to be going through, through the Megazooks Gold Collection in a random order, and um, hopefully find some pretty good stuff there as well. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, Shovel War Scavengers, you seem to have a lot of fun at the very least, and sound off and chat if you did. Uh, I might do this again at a later time. I have all the stuff set up for it now. So I would like to be able to use it for more than one session. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'll see about putting this in every so often and... Uh, See uh, see what we can get. Yeah, Megazook Shuffletron, something to look forward to um, next week. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this stuff as well. I got I really enjoyed watching sho uh, Shovelware Diggers and uh, seeing what would come up uh, in that collection. Because like I said at the beginning of the stream, like I grew up with this collection as well, and there's still a lot of stuff in here that I don't even know exists and there there's clearly still some good stuff on this disc uh i understand chris's reasoning for not wanting to keep going too far in because there's still like a lot of stuff that not that won't necessarily be very fun there's a lot of board and card games which are going to be hit and miss right and yeah, anyway. But there's still some real cool stuff. We we got two treasures, I think, today. Uh, we had uh, Ant Run and uh, Snarf. Well, I guess Snarf had already come up, but uh, Ant Run didn't. I was happy to play that again. Yeah, exactly, Zenf. Like, there, there weren't a whole lot of people picking them. There's still a lot left on the table there. I was a little biased with that run, but like for what it for what it is, it's very featureful and offers some pretty good um pretty good features and variations to the game. Also getting to play Super Entrap at 1024 by 768 by 256 colors is definitely not something that I got to do before. <laughs> that was really cool looking though. Anyway, I'm kinda gushing at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and call it there. Thank y'all for joining me on this adventure, and hopefully we can do this again in the future. Until then, though, I'm Cool here if you don't know, and I'll see you guys next time.